Good evening and welcome to Made in the Triad. Tonight we showcase seven companies that create products that are made right in your backyard. You're not going to want to miss any of this, so settle in, maybe even pack a snack. I know I have. I've got a B&G pie made right here in the Triad. So everything that you get in a B&G pie is made from scratch, just like it would be out of your kitchen. And Miss Jenny's Pickles of Kernersville. These are actually being custom made for Dina to look at today. To a couple from Ashboro that makes homemade toys and sends them all over the world. A lot of the toys are old folk toys and Everybody tells us they don't see a lot of them. All of these products and more are made right in your community, and we're going to show them to you tonight in the special presentation of Made in the Triad. One sweet snack down and one more to go. In fact, this one here has a family recipe and a dedicated family. Those two ingredients together make for a pretty successful company in Bear Creek. In fact, now that Christmas is almost here, this is the busy time for Southern Supreme. It's something I worked on for years and uh, perfected. A lot of people make a lot of fun of fruitcake. And people say, why'd you call it fruitcake? But for the Scott family, this sign is no joke. Well, you know, it is got some fruit in it. It's an invite into their family kitchen, Southern Supreme. They don't like a lot of fruit and gooey stuff, and we don't have that, and we have a lot of nuts. Our cake is almost like a nut cake. The family recipe has held its flavor for 25 years. I had been serving these cakes to my customers in the beauty shop. They always bragged on my cake so much. One day I told them I was going to stop selling, doing their hair and start selling my fruit cake. In 1984, that's exactly what she did. With help from family and friends, Berta Scott concocted this family fruitcake in the garage, making two to 300 pounds a day, and now... Well, the fruitcake kitchen does about 3,000 pounds a day. With holiday orders beginning to trickle in, the bake staff mixes, forms, decorates, and wraps, on average, 1,500 fruitcakes a day. I think what makes our stand out is the pecans and the walnuts, and we kind of leave out the stuff that people don't like. And while the fruit cake may be their specialty, the crew of 100 also bakes up all sorts of sweets. The tasty treats are all made by hand and then wrapped and shipped all over the world. We ship uh, mostly United States, but we have seen a lot going over to Iraq and, and China, England. From humble beginnings to worldly success, the joke may no longer be on the fruitcake, but on those that have not tried one baked by Berta Scott. I think this is amazing. I think it's overwhelming, but it's like my mom says, we feel blessed. People come from all over to shop at the Southern Supreme showroom, but I gotta tell you, the Scott family credits a lot of their success to the holiday market that takes place in Greensboro every year. How about a recipe for a little old fashioned fun? McCoy's Toys in Ashboro? They're on a roll. This may look like the North Pole. We got involved in making toys and it seems like we can't make enough now. The toys crafted out of this Southern Randolph County home all have one common theme. There no batteries required, just imagination. John and Emily McCoy started McCoy's Toys back in 2003. I think there are a lot of young parents who want this type of toy for their children because they do want their imagination to be stimulated. Six days a week, John, a former furniture employee, runs the shop. His wife, Emily, mans the art department, painting each toy one by one. A lot of the toys are old folk toys and Everybody tells us they don't see a lot of them. Each one unique. This is a stack and roll. And all made with quality in mind. That's what we're after. Not to sell more of the same thing, but we just want your product to last a long time. Some are even magical. The rope slides through the two blocks, just like this, but it's a magic rope. So I'm gonna break the blocks apart. Whoops, I broke my rope. <gasps> But I said it was a magic rope, so let me see. I'll put the two blocks back together. Okay, magic rope. There it goes. A national magazine noticed the McCoy's attention to detail. The McCoy's toys were featured in Southern Home Living magazine this year. How did they find us and choose our checkerboard to be in their national magazine? Maybe it was because of a prayer. 
John actually said, okay, Lord, either make it go or shut it down. The couple has shipped goods all over the world via their website. France to Germany to Greece, uh, to the UK, and um, to many times to Canada, California, just all over the United States. This is a spinning wheel. McCoy's toys bring back the past. The acrobat, you just simply squeeze the bottom together and you can get him to do flips and tricks. While focusing on the future. We're truly blessed because just so many things and uh, that's where John says, well, you better be careful what you ask for because God's answered our prayer. <laughs> Coming up. Yeah, Mount Olive started during the Great Depression. Well, Miss Jenny started during the Great Recession. How a layoff inspired two former co-workers to start their own business. North Carolina, it stands. But that's not the only place it's sold. How a company has stayed true to its core values for more than 60 years. Welcome back to Made in the Triad. We continue now with two women who were in a pickle. They both lost their jobs, and then they got an idea, and it turned their misfortune into fortune. Oh, there's two, look. For partners, Jenny Fulton. My field of dreams is my field of green, and it's pickles. And Ashley Fur. We are trying to jar as many cucumbers as are coming out of the fields. 2009 marked the year that dreams really did come true. I can't believe my pickles are in the grocery store, but they are. Miss Jenny's pickles tingle your taste buds. The first recipe was a basic recipe from Jenny's grandmother. The two tweaked grandma's recipe to create the first salt and pepper pickle. I need yellow, please, Miss Alicia. Now the company makes four varieties. These are actually being custom made for Dean and Deluca today. This year of success has been a pleasant surprise and a big turnaround. These two co-workers found themselves in a pickle not too long ago. We were both in the financial industry together. We worked together. I was uh, laid off in June of 2009, and um, Jenny was laid off as well. Out of work, they needed to reinvent themselves, but they wanted to continue to work together. Jenny had always made pickles. I hadn't. I'm city girl. I've never canned anything in my life. My husband, Bo, and I were sitting on the front porch, and he's like, you know, your pickles are really good. We just started making pickles for people. People started liking them. People liked them so much that Peter Piper could not have picked a more perfect pickle. Technically, we're not a year old, and we're in 33 locations. So with the help from family and friends, they are shipped all over. The pair pickle 2,600 jars a week. We're hand packed. We're hand cut. We're hand labeled. Everything's done by hand, you know, like the old fashioned. Way. And you know what? If it doesn't look good, if I'm not going to eat it, then I'm not serving it to you. That's our motto. As to what the future may hold, they look to another famous North Carolina pickle company. Mount Olive, North Carolina. You know, Mount Olive started during the Great Depression. Well, Miss Jenny started during the Great Recession. The Great Recession may one day be known as the Great Reinvention. It's a great story, but I'll tell you, I got big dreams and big hopes. We're going one household. We, I mean, when people think of pickles, they're going to think of Miss Jenny. The pickling process, it's pretty quick, and Miss Jenny's is on the fast track to success. But what does it take to be in business for 60 years or more? Well, we're gonna marinate on that for just a minute. From one family recipe to another, Stan's pimento cheese. It's been a staple in the South, and I mean the entire South. Oh yeah, that was Daddy. He said, I'm gonna call it Stan's, and he said, the recipe ain't never gonna change. And Stan's pimento cheese has stayed true for the last 53 years. My dad started the business in 1952. At the time, Stan Hudgens was operating neighborhood produce stores in Alamance County, and he had no plans to promote or distribute the product to any major chain. And everybody loved it so much, the distributor came by one day, and I think this was in 1983, and uh, he asked us about distributing the pimento cheese. And as they say, the rest is history. Started out pretty much with Food Line, and we're in Food Line and Lowe's and um, Harris Teeter. Three days a week, a staff of four produce on average 25,000 pounds of pimento cheese. But it's not the quantity that makes this homegrown product a hit, it's the quality. 
very few people that still use what you call real cheese and we get our cheese from Wisconsin. I mean, you could come along and use imitation cheese and save money and all that stuff. But no, no. Like I said, you know, our recipe is what built the name Stan's. The secret in the recipe almost became, well, not so secret. We used to make it out in front of everybody and there was a couple of people that came in and copied our recipe. From that point on, the cheese making moved behind closed doors. It's basically like, Grandma's, you know what I'm talking about, or great grandma's, a recipe that's been handed down, you know, in the family. And they're keeping it in the family. Stan's daughter Sherry now runs the day-to-day -day operation. Just don't call her boss. I treat them like family. Um, Jay every now and then will come by and say, hey boss. I say, don't call me boss. I'm not no boss. Everybody knows what to do around here. The taste of the South is spreading, and not just on toast and crackers. And my daddy more or less told me, you know, you keep the price down, you'll sell more volume. And that's what I do. I love our customers, and we strive to make our customers happy. And making a good product is really, really what matters. Take a trip down the frozen food aisle, and you're actually traveling to the triad. The name on the box, Tim James, not just a made-up name, a real person, a real company, and made in the triad. We were selling maybe as many as 40 chicken pot pies a day at our little retail place. And I said, well, if we can do this here, what would it do if it was in 100 grocery stores? At the time, Tim James was operating the commissary, a catering business in Greensboro. Now he's filling folks' bellies up and down the East Coast. We're in uh, right at 1,100 grocery stores. Now called James Foods, the company prepares frozen meals daily at this Asheboro USDA plant. We will make probably around four or 500 of these today. Today's menu, spinach lasagna, peach cobbler, and their most popular, chicken pot pie. The chicken pie, I think that's the favorite. And the red blitz potatoes, those are really good. All of the made from scratch entrees bear the James name and the James family recipes. It's uh, kind of my grand, some of my grandmother's recipes. The company was founded just under four years ago with two employees. Now they have 40 and they have plans to add more. We got an interesting call back, back in the fall from a, a distributor and a food service company in uh, Dubai. If that goes through in the next couple of weeks, we're going to need to hire another 120 people. The comfort food they create has served up company success, and every employee gets a piece. I told everybody when they came to work here that I didn't have much money to pay them, but if they stuck with me, that I would look after them and their families. He has, and yeah. Yeah, he has. He's done really good with that. As he looks to the future, James hopes to build upon the promise that he made just a few years ago. The money will be great, but the, the winning and seeing the success of people here and seeing them evolve from a, a county that when a lot of these people came in, they said they would take six fifty an hour, you know, and, and I, I like to see them grow and become leaders in the company. It, it, and it really has worked out very well and it's, and it's gone very quickly, I think, in just a four-year period. Every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we highlight a different business in Made in the Triad. We can't fit them all into this showcase, so we thought we'd give you a little extra flavor. Like Big Daddy's Marinade of Archdale. You know, you see it coming run off that line the first time with a label on there, man. We just knew, you know, all of our dreams and everything just coming into, into, into reality. And Natty Greens of Greensboro. And that's sort of one of the unique stories about Natty Greens that we've really, really become a bee of the community. The first product after the Chow Chow was barbecue sauce that actually had the Golding Farms name on it. Now, Golding Farms of Winston-Salem bottles 250 different recipes to the bottled beverage of the South. It looked like red wine and it was sparkling and um, cherry, so uh, he named it Cheer Wine. But next. So much of today uh, is too automated, and so we've stuck to our roots since, since 1949 of making everything by hand. A southern tradition for more than half a century. See how these tasty treats are still made by hand. Something that's made in North Carolina, that's handmade in North Carolina. For some, the holidays would not be the same without this Winston-Salem tradition. Lemon 
chocolate, cherry, apple, and beach. B&G Pies has been making these pies for more than 50 years. The recipe hasn't changed, the technique hasn't changed, and really, that's their recipe for success. Because so much of today uh, is too automated, and so we've stuck to our roots. This is not your grandmother's kitchen, although she would be proud of this product. Everything here is handmade. The personal touch at B&G Pies in Winston-Salem is the special ingredient in this tasty treat. We find that that's what makes the product taste the best and that's what makes people come back. They're so proud their product is handmade, they print it on each and every wrapper. It is not just a slogan. Back in 1949, two cousins, Alton Bodenheimer and GM Griffin, started with one filling, apple. Now the company makes cherry, peach, lemon, mm, and chocolate. Each week, on average, a staff of 11 roll, fill, cook, and wrap by hand 24,000 pies. These are our own recipes, um, and we use some local ingredients to help make these uh, uh, recipes successful. In addition to the pies, the company introduced their own line of oatmeal chocolate peanut butter cookies. The cookies are hand dipped in forms, so there's a lot of love that goes into these products that make them unique. Something else unique, the employee's tenure. Some have been with the company for more than 30 years. They're dedicated to the brand. Uh, they're dedicated to uh, the history of B&G, and that's what keeps us going. The company really reached the height of popularity during the 60s and the 70s. We've had to find a way to re rebirth the brand. Their success is on a roll. We've been very fortunate because our business is tracking 82 percent sales increase over last year. Surging sales, a dedicated workforce, and a product for generations to enjoy make B&G a triad staple. That's right. You go in the convenience store and grab yourself an RC Cola or a cheer wine and a, and a B and G pie on your lunch break. Uh, there are a lot of fond memories of that. There still are, and we want to continue that through generations to come. Chocolate. Yummy, yummy chocolate. Mama Laura's chocolates all got started because Laura wanted to find a way to say Merry Christmas to her kids' teachers. Now, these chocolates are shipped worldwide. Right now, during the Christmas season, we will work 15-hour shifts. But that's a good problem to have. The good problem actually started out as a solution. This is a ganache that we use for our milk chocolate truffles. Laura Godwin was looking for a way to say Merry Christmas in a homemade way. I would have never thought from four years ago doing it as Christmas gifts for teachers it would have evolved to something of this nature. From chocolate covered Oreos to peanut butter cups and her most popular. Our number one bestseller is our, our homemade turtles. Mm -mm, Mama Laura's is beginning to taste success. This one is going to New York. I have people ordering from Pittsburgh this week and I'm not sure how they found out about Mama Laura's but we're glad that they did. Her recipe is simple. If it's something my great grandmother wouldn't have made, then I don't make it either. With more than 15 different products to choose from, each one is it's unique and handmade. The often gooey goodies have a storied name. My great grandmother, for whom I am named, was Laura Sanderson, and her grandchildren called her Mama Laura. Well, you know, one day when I have grandchildren, I'll be Mama Laura. The name stuck. And so has the business. Chocolate's one of those things that's doing well in the economy. Chocolate is an affordable luxury. It's something that you can really feel like you're indulging yourself without spending a whole lot of money. So you don't have the guilt factor financially. My great grandmother used to say, dance with the one who brought you. So that's what we're going to do. We're still going to keep our chocolates, but we'd like to incorporate, like I said, a little bit more warmer weather things. We promised that we were going to showcase seven local companies, but look around. I always say, there's always room for another sweet treat. Here's company number eight. When you say the name Dewey's, the word cake comes to mind. And whether you like vanilla or chocolate around, really, it's the eight inch by eight inch square sugar cake that people really know best. Christmas isn't Christmas without it. What you think, champ? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe for success hasn't changed much in nearly 80 years. And the response, always the same. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Dewey's has been a staple in Winston-Salem since 1930, baking up tasty treats. From coffee cakes to Moravian love feast buns, and of course, the sugar cake. Sugar cake is, without a doubt, the most popular product that we sell. Sugar cake has sweetened sales so much, Dewey's opens up 22 extra stores during the Christmas season 
and the bakery ovens are hot 24-7. We sell it by the tens of thousands, so we have to run shifts all day long. The sugar rush isn't just in the stores. Online orders have really taken the cake to all 50 states and Canada. You can set up shipping anywhere in the world. With one exception. As long as it can get there in two days. To preserve the freshness, of course. To meet the demand, Dewey's employs around 100 people for 11 months out of the year. But during the month of December... We easily double that number during the holiday season. Sugar cake is the star, but there are 500 fresh baked yummy goodies. From holiday cookies that are shaped like trees and presents and ornaments to snowmen, everything still gets hand decorated one at a time in the bakery. All products are made from scratch. And the sweets are designed to treat the taste bud without taking a toll on the wallet. We've also worked really hard over the past several years not to increase prices on things, which helps a lot because when you're looking for something that still says special and handmade, but you don't want to spend a fortune and you really want it to feel unique. From generations past to the present, this mixture of ingredients has made Dewey's a holiday staple for those right here in the triad and all across the nation. Good. It really is an honor, and I think you, you get that from our bakers. They feel really proud to bake the things they do every day by hand and then pass them across the counter behind me because they know they're coming to your house and that they'll be a part of your holiday. This sure was a sweet way to end the show. We hope that you've enjoyed this special presentation of Made in the Triad. I know I have. In fact, I think I have room for one more, and I don't really mean one more bite. Good night.